Hi, this is Megan Chapman, and this is the Tuesday Studio Video Visit. Thank you so much for joining me again this week. Um, today, I'm just going to have a small, short demystification process. Sort of, um, that's one of my passions, is to demystify the arts process. I've always been quite open about um, my process as far as it comes to painting. Uh, materials I use, how I create paintings. I also do quite a bit of writing regarding my studio practice. Um, so I've been always fairly open about everything. Um, and my goal is to be become even more increasingly open about everything in the arts. My small, tiny little part of working in the arts um, for the last 20 plus years um, and so it's occurred to me that maybe some of you are curious how galleries work um, and how, you know, exhibitions come about and, and things like that. So I'm going to tell you. <laughs> so first of all, of course, the artist is working away on a body of work. Um, sometimes the artist submits a body of work to various galleries um, for consideration for to either be included in a group exhibition or perhaps a solo exhibition. Of course, um, solo exhibitions are highly regarded and you might show an entire body of work or a series of work. It might take you years to create this or, or months to create this very specific body of work. And many artists really all want to have a solo exhibition because they, they want to kind of show this broader sense of an entire body of work um, and take the audience member sort of on a, on a trip or a journey through that and give them that experience um, and see how each piece maybe relates or responds to the next piece as they tell the story through their body of work. So that's the solo, or maybe they just have a couple of pieces and it's a group show, or they have a couple of pieces because it's a commercial gallery and the gallery is showing lots of different pieces from lots of different artists. Sometimes they have a stable of artists, so there's not really any overarching theme um, of what's up in their gallery. So maybe they have five or 10 or 15 or some galleries have many, many artists and they might have just a, a smattering of each person's work. Um, sometimes those, there is work out on the walls, but then there's also work in storage. So you may go because you've seen on a website that a certain artist shows with this particularly particular gallery and then when you get there the work isn't on display but you can ask the gallerist to um, show you the work of that artist. So that's just a basic overview and of course there are exhibitions that happen in public art spaces, of course museums, you know the upper levels, um, art centers, um, and, and things like that. And of course, coffee shops, libraries, church halls, you name it. If there's a wall, you can have an art exhibition. Um, and I certainly have um, anywhere and everywhere um, So for years. So I have lots of different experiences of each of those. If you're curious about any of those and you want more details, you know, send me a message or leave me a comment. So. Some places, like if, say, you show in a university or perhaps a university library, there might be something called an honorarium or you might get an exhibition fee. Um, sadly, this is still fairly rare unless you are a certain tier of artist. Um, and even then, it's still fairly rare because a lot of these institutions don't have much of a budget for the arts. So I think in the 24... 25 some years I've been doing this. I was paid an honorarium once uh, to have an exhibition um, in a university. Um, yeah, so one time I believe, maybe maybe twice, but I'm pretty sure it was only the once I was paid to show my work. And that's just like a set fee. Um, and then of course your work would be for sale as well. And that's the next thing is sometimes, um, so your work's for sale in a gallery and that gallery takes a commission of the work. 
So you may go into a gallery and you may say, oh my God, this work is so expensive. I don't understand why. Well, you know, let's say a 1,200 pound painting, for example. Many commercial galleries, especially in larger cities and of a certain level, they may take a 50% commission. So because they ideally uh, are providing the space and you know the energy to run the space and ideally they have a well-maintained website and they are doing the social media promotion and print promotion and hopefully getting their artist interviews and all sorts of things to promote the artist's work or to promote the group of artists work so they may take 50 percent commission so suddenly that 1200 pound painting or 1200 dollar painting is only going to net the artist 600 pounds. So then it doesn't seem quite as expensive perhaps because maybe it's a quite, you know, it's a large painting. It took many months and years and training and materials and they of course had to get the work to the gallery. Um, and so there's so many uh, expenses involved in what it took to create that piece of art. And then the gallery gets half um, because, of course, they're supplying the venue, they're paying the rent on that space, as well as, hopefully, they are promoting the work um, so, that, so that you do sell it, because, of course, it benefits everybody that if they can manage a sale of your work. So um, that's just a very brief kind of overview. So in most cases, when you walk into your smaller sort of commercial gallery around town, any town that you're in, um, and you see all the art on the wall, that art is basically being loaned for free to the gallery. Um, and it is completely being held there let's say on commission, but completely speculatively. So if the artist sells work, they'll make a little bit of money and the gallery will make a little bit of money. Now that's why galleries have large stables of artists so that they can, you know, spread it out. So, you know, maybe so-and-so hasn't been selling in six months or a year, but X is really hot right now. So X is really selling and X is helping pay the gallery's rent. Um, so that's just a really brief overview, although it's not that brief because it's seven minutes 50 here um, on the time. But I just thought you all might be interested in thinking about that so that when you walk into a gallery, um, you realize that that artist isn't getting paid unless they sell a painting. And when they sell a painting, they may be getting... 50% of that price or 60%, a 60-40 split is pretty common. Um, usually with more nonprofit type organizations or government funded organizations, maybe there'd be a better split, community run organizations, collectives, things like that, you'd get a better rate, a better split. And then there are some wonderful institutions um, that you know, have a very reduced rate because they're just trying to get maybe people in their door. They're trying to be a community resource. They want to support the arts. They understand that there's not a lot of money in it and unless you do happen to sell a piece. So there's just so many different variables that go into this whole practice. And then that all kind of boils down to the working conditions of the artist. Um, and whether or not they're fair or not. So that's where I'm gonna leave it right now because I really do think this is an interesting subject and it's worth exploring. Um, but think about the other culture that you see, whether it's you pay a fee uh, to Netflix to watch a film, you pay a fee to go into the cinema to watch a film, you pay five pound, cover charge to see your favorite local punk rock band, for example. Hopefully it's not five pounds or five dollars anymore. Hopefully they're getting at least 10 at the door and people are still angry about it. So, but just think about it. Even though it's a small amount of money, they are getting a little bit of compensation. 
And now think about the visual artist. What compensation are they getting for all those months of planning and painting and the materials and the education and everything that brought them to that moment where they were offered an exhibition? And just, I just think it's important to think about. Um, I have benefited from some incredible commercial galleries, um, and I have shown it some that pretty much kept my work in the storeroom. So, you know, it's hit or miss, and a lot of galleries operate with the best of intentions. A lot of galleries are owned by artists themselves. And um, so, you know, this isn't me picking on any particular thing. This is just me sharing with transparency how this system sort of works. Because until we all speak about our individual experiences within the system and we share what's going on in the system, we can't really change the system or make improvements to the system. So I just thought you all might be interested in all that. And if you know it all already, or I'm speaking to, you know, preaching to the choir because you're all artists perhaps watching, then just thanks for your patience uh, in listening to this. I would love to hear your stories um, about how have you earned an honorarium? Do you often get exhibition fees for showing your work? Um, you know, what what's going on in, in, in your situation? Um, I just find it all very fascinating and because we're so varied, uh, there isn't like a one size fits all, um, but because we're also so isolated in our own little individual studios um, and we don't talk so much about the business aspect of being an artist, being a worker, um, there's a lot of room for things to seem quite nebulous and for us to sort of be kept in the dark. Um, and for us to be just so grateful for opportunity when sometimes those opportunities are actually quite exploitive. So just to, just a few things to think about as we're coming in at 12 minutes here on the Tuesday studio video visit. Um, I hope you enjoyed this chat, this demystification of the art world. Uh, if you do, I, I'd love to tell you more and share some more things with you and, and hear your opinions. I am thankful to every gallery that has represented me. Um, it's been an interesting ride. And um, yeah, and to all the patrons who have supported me quite generously over the years. Um, yeah, it's been a delight to share my work, but at the same time, I think a few things need to change, don't you? All right, take very good care of yourselves and I will see you again next week on the Tuesday Studio video visit. Bye.